There is a specific uh, verse I wanted to ask you about. It says, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and those with him are forceful against the disbelievers and merciful among themselves. Mentions here forceful against the disbelievers. So again, you've mentioned some great examples. However, there seems to be a clear point here that the believers should be forceful against the disbelievers. Can you elaborate on this for us? Yeah. Given that the Quran is the revelation from Allah to his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so the most logical response would be how did the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam apply the Quran in his own life? So in this ayah we're told that Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And this is one of those occasions in which Allah announces the risala of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, by name in the Quran. And he describes the role of those who are with him. And those who are with him. Those who are with him in belief. Mm. Those who are with him in personality, in character, in behavior, in manner. وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشِدَّاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَّارِ They are stern towards the kuffar, those who deny the existence, the oneness in the belief, in their belief of Allah. رُحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ Merciful towards one another. The question is, what is that shidda that those who are with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is that sternness? that they are expected to show towards the disbelievers. Yes. I'm not going to give answer from myself. We said that another fissira, when you look to the seerah, it illuminates the basira. If you want to know what does Allah mean, look to how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam understood what the Qur'an means. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina, in his own masjid, welcomes and receives a delegation of 70 Arab Christians from the land of Najran. If he interpreted that verse to be forceful towards the disbelievers, not to show them any courtesy whatsoever, or to give them the time of day, then why would he welcome them into his city, number one? Why would he welcome them into his own masjid? And when the time for their salah, their prayer, because they pray as well, when the time for the prayer of this Christian delegation came in Medina, and they were where? In the holiest, second holiest place for Muslims, the own masjid of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he offers them a place to pray in his own masjid. Where's the sternness there? Mm. You see? That's one. Also, sternness in terms of how stern is your heart in response to the beliefs of those who go against the way of Allah. Do you have a guard on your heart to ensure that it is not going to accept the ways of those who try and take the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam away from the legacy not only of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but I say all prophets and messengers. We have nothing against those who follow Isa, Jesus. Muslims have nothing against those who follow the ways of Musa, Harun, Yusha, all the great prophets of Allah. In fact, Muslims love all those who came previously and followed in their ways. And also today, wherever they are in their world, who are trying to follow their ways. But the Quran is a furqan. Mm. The Quran is a criterion. And where Allah has seen that people who claim to follow previous prophets and messengers have lost their way, he comes to re-guide them with this hidayah, with this guidance. And this is how we are stern towards the disbelievers in terms of we know what is ultimately right, we know what our responsibility is, what our role is in this earth, and that is to worship the one true God, and that is to follow the law and the legislation and the sharia of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whilst at the same time ensuring that we transmit, we propagate that with the principle that Allah establishes in the Qur'an, the establishment of calling to Allah, conveying the message of Allah, ud'u, 
ila sabili rabbika. Look how beautifully Allah describes da'wah. Allah, the first word that he uses in this principle is the word udu'u. Udu'u is invite. Invite, how do you invite someone? Do you want to invite them with a nice invitation or with a stinky, raggedy old invitation? You want to invite them with a nice invitation. Can you come invite someone to your party, to your wedding? When you're angry? No, they're not going to accept. They're going to run the other way. Udu'u, where do you invite to? It's not your way. It's not your club. Some Muslims think that Islam is my club. It's not my club. Or they, some of them think that it's the club of the Prophet Muhammad No, it's not the club of the Prophet Muhammad. Udu'u ila sabili rabbika. Invite to the way of your Lord. Meaning this is not yours. This is Allah's deen. So don't you get upset and don't you get anxious when people aren't believing. Because guess what? Since the time Allah created human beings and placed them on earth, they've been playing up. So we need to understand the application of sternness, not through our eyes, because our eyes sometimes, a lot of the time, don't have the basira, doesn't have the spiritual insight. We just see based on, we see someone that is a different belief than us, then we show them harshness and sternness. And if that was the case, if we were to show sternness in the way that we deal with uh, non-Muslims, then why would Allah permit Muslims in the Qur'an to eat from the food of the people of the book? But let's go further. Why would Allah permit marriage between Muslim men and women of the people of the book, the Jewish and the Christians and those who follow their scriptures? If we were... Between a husband and a wife, can you find any relationship which is more gentle, subtle, beautiful, compassionate kind? If Allah says, I permit you to have marriage with someone who is not Muslim, in fact, Jewish or Christian, where's the sternness there? 